Welcome to part 3. If you want to catch up with the other parts, just check in the description area and uh, you'll be quickly up to speed with what we're discussing here. Now, one of the very interesting revelations that comes out of the uh, Akombe interview, yeah, after her resignation, you know, she talked to BBC, is the fact that uh, Buana Chibukati is able to interpret the law very well, okay? But the only problem is that the decisions he comes out with are really not his own, yeah? Now, this is to emphasize the fact that uh, Buana Chibukati is under siege. She gives an example with the time when Raila pulled out of the elections, yes. Uh, his view, Chibukati's view, according to Akombe, was that uh, they should call for fresh elections. She interpre interpreted the law very well and he said according to the law, they could actually call for fresh elections, fresh nominations, fresh everything, yeah. And uh, in his view, this was a better position for the, for the country and a better position indeed even for the uh, electoral IBC, yeah? But according to Akombe, there's a group of commissioners who are bent, yeah, towards Jubilee side, yes? And their work is to make sure that the election happens at all costs, yeah? Whether cost to life, cost to lives of uh, IBC staff, cost to life of uh, the, norm, you know, the ordinary monaichi, they don't care. The most important brief is to ensure that elections happens at all costs, okay? Forget everything else, yeah? Now, um, this is very interesting, yes, but uh, there's also something else that uh, um, Akombe said. She said that uh, there was something about the chairman's character. If he was a more forceful person, she believes that uh, he's in a position to have gotten a lot more achieved. Those were her words. Yeah, not to change the st the way I read it is not to change the situation uh, uh, entirely. Yes, because of course the the commission is under siege. But in her view, if it was more forceful, he would have been able to achieve much more. Yeah. So what she was saying, in other words, is that he's a bit laid back. Yeah. People do things over his head, and you know, he just takes it easy. It, it's it's an aspect of his character. Now, of course, Akombe spoke those words before the development uh, about two hours ago. Uh, not two hours, more than that, yeah, a few hours ago, when uh, Chairman Chebukati came out with the strongest statement he has ever come out with, yeah, where he said, you know, he just fell short of resigning. <laughs> That's the way I read it, yeah. He just fell short of saying, I give up, yeah, because what he said is that he's not prepared to be part of a sham of an election, okay? He's not prepared to be a rubber stamp. He's not prepared to go down in history as the chairman of the IABC who led the country into chaos as a result of the elections. Yeah, that's what he said. And he also confirmed uh, what Akombe said uh, and said that, you know, he's, he has always been overruled. A lot of the decisions he makes, a lot of the moves he wants to make, a lot of the changes he wants to make is always overruled by the other commissioners. Now, it is important to note that the other commissioners are not lawyers, yeah? Bwana Chebukati is the only lawyer in the IBC, okay? Now, what does that mean? It means that if the other commissioners overrule him, yes, what are they overruling him on what grounds? Because Chebukat interprets the law and then makes his decision or his suggestion based on the law, okay? So the only way the other people are able, are able to overrule him, because Chebukat also mentioned uh, they, they come with, they interpret the law, yeah, in ways which are convenient only to themselves, yeah? So what that means, because these people are not lawyers, is that they're receiving outside counsel, yeah? They're receiving advice outside. It means that the commission is taking advice from lawyers outside the commission. Just think about it. A lawyer tells you one, two, three. Yes, I've decided we do this because of one, two, three. And then you tell them no, and you're not a lawyer. Yeah? The only way you can tell them no is that you've already received a brief from an outside lawyer. And you tell them no, we must do it like this because of three, four, five, six. The constitution here, the, this law here, etc., etc. Now, not only is this illegal, it is just crazy. In other words, we can confidently, very confidently, christen the IABC, the JEBC, Jubilee Electoral and Boundaries Commission. That is precisely what it is. Now, uh, Akombe has fled the country, okay? She fears for her life. Uh, you know, she found herself in a situation at the IABC. She tried her best to turn around the situation. She was completely defeated. Okay? On the other, on the other hand, Bwana Chebukati is still in the mix. 
and there are even bigger questions about Bwana Chibukati because how can he come out to the press conference he came out with a few hours ago uh, and this was the kind of press conference he should have called before the 8th of August okay now there's partly an answer in um, Combe's uh, uh, interview with the BBC she said that uh, before August 8th um, the commissioners were able to pass good decisions yeah and there was little or no interference, uh, you know, there was no big jubilee influence uh, within the IBC. Now this is easy to understand because there are no big legal decisions to be made. There's no candidate who had resigned. Yeah, there's no issue bringing in other candidates at the last minute. So we can only assume the rigging was done uh, without uh, Chebukati's knowledge and without uh, Akombe's knowledge, okay? All, all the dirty work that was done on 8th August they had little or no knowledge and they had a little hand, they had a very little hand on it, okay? Now, a lot of people will uh, argue against this, quite rightly so. However, it is a pointer as to why the government has insisted, come what may, that Bonachiloba must remain at the IBC. It can only mean that Bonachiloba is a very important insider to execute Jubilee evil plans, yeah? Of fiddling with the elections. That's what it, that's what it means, yeah? But it is also true that going forward, I mean, when all this is over, one day, maybe a year from now, two years from now, when this issue is revisited, because I can assure you it's going to be revisited, yeah? Who played what role, who did what, yeah? Bwana Chebukati will find it very difficult to get away scot-free. And that is simply because the buck stops at his desk, okay? As president, if evils are done during administration, you can not one day come up in your defense and say, those evils were done without my knowledge. How? You are one of the responsibilities of a leader, you are supposed to be aware of everything that is being done. Yeah, When something is done under your nose, it's as good as that something being approved by yourself. That's just the reality in law, and that's just the reality in life. Here I'm talking specifically about August 8th, and the events leading to August 8th and after. However, it is good that he's trying to redeem himself. Okay? It is good. At least it's a step ahead. A step ahead of the Jubilee faction within the IABC. Or is it the JEBC? Yeah? That Jubilee faction, unfortunately, they don't understand the law. They're not lawyers, yeah? And unfortunately, they don't understand the repercussions. They have no precedent in law about what has happened in other places, about people who have uh, colluded, yes, people have been given instructions. At the end of the day, it will be very difficult for them to pass on the responsibility to anybody else. Yeah? It will be very difficult for them in a court of law to say, we're instructed by so and so. Yeah? So the full responsibility of whatever they do will fall upon their, their heads. Okay? And indeed, one of the very strong pieces of evidence is that what they have done has resulted in a person fleeing the country for his life. That is very strong evidence. Okay? What they have done, their handiwork, uh, the operation within the IBC has caused somebody to leave the country fearing for their lives. Okay? So it's going to be very, very difficult for them to get off the hook. Very impossible for them to get off the hook. Of course, right now they're operating on the very myopic view, yeah, very short-sighted view that, oh, we are supporting the government, or oh, the government will win, or oh, the Uhuru cannot lose, or oh, the will always protect us, etc., etc. Yeah? They're, of course, totally unaware of the toilet paper syndrome. They're totally aware that uh, if wherever they're getting the instructions from, yeah, uh, cabinet secretaries, uh, state house, and so on and so forth, those people, if push comes to shove, they'll completely deny this faction within the IBC. That's what they're not totally aware of. That's what they're totally unaware of. Unaware. Yeah? They're just living in dreamland. They're living in a... <laughs> they're living in a utopia that actually does not exist. Yeah? That one day will come crashing down terribly. Okay? Not only that, the... Chebukati said something very interesting in his uh, press statement. He said he does not want, eh? remember what I keep doing here, that do, what I keep on telling you here, do something that will stand the test of time. Chebukati said he's aware that whatever he does, yeah, if he messes up, yes, it will be his legacy yeah, and that of his family. Yeah? So this uh, rogue IBC commissioners, short-sighted rogue IBC jubilee commissioners, yeah, 
are not aware that the, the rest of their lives and the lives of their families are going to be, you know, the legacy is going to be defined but what, by what they have done so far at IBC. Yeah? The lives of Kenyans on their heads, the blood spilt on their heads, the children killed, everything is on their heads. They're not aware of this. Okay? I'm, I feel very sad for them. But that's the path they have chosen. And something very interesting in law, ignorance is never defense. You cannot say, oh, Moshimi wa siku jua kuiba ni vibaya. Oh, Moshimi wa nilikuwa nafikiri ukiiba na mkono, hiyo ndo wizi. Lakini ukiiba na kalamu, minu nilikuwa nafikiri ni sawa tu. Kwa sabu na unangu watu wakifanya. Or, oh, Moshimi wa nilikuwa nafikiri kuiba kura si shida. Nikuwa nafikiri kuiba pesa ndo, I mean kura si pesa, kura ena value, si kura ni kura tu. Mini nikuwa nafikiri tu kuiba pesa tu ndo naeza fungo. Mini nikuwa, nikuwa naona kuiba kura, ama ukiona watu wengine si sisi tuliba, lakini ukisaidia watu kuiba kura, mini nikuwa naona hiyo si kitu kubwa sana. <laughs> very sad, very sad although I'm laughing. It means that they can never ever defend themselves like that. And folks, I'll tell you something in closing. I have a very funny feeling that that day is coming sooner, much, much, much sooner than anybody thinks. Yeah? Uh, we wish Akombe the best. Uh, stay safe, Rosalind Akombe. We salute you. Thank you for being a patriotic Kenya. Thank you for having a conscience. God bless you. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha. <laughs>